and welcome to my little green booth. Um, it's green because I teach from time to time and um, you may well sometimes hear the frogs croaking outside in the garden. Okay, please don't let that put you off. Um, I'm talking to you today because I wanted really to describe where I am, what I'm doing, and actually this is the best way of doing it. About six weeks ago, I was delivering a lesson to a Chinese student, and the lesson plan focused on life plans, on what the student wanted to do when they were an adult. Now, that lesson was on a Monday, and it was on the Monday following a very difficult week for me and my wife, uh, Susie, and um, that was because two things. Number one, we had been progressing with a mortgage application to buy a house, um, and we found out as a result of the COVID pandemic um, and the world economy as it is, that the bank had decided we weren't able to get the mortgage we need to buy the house we wanted. Instead, they came back with an offer which was substantially less than what we needed. So that was the end of a dream, an idea. The second thing that happened in that same week was um, since April, we had been in discussion with a family who had approached us with the aim of us adopting uh, a baby when it would be born uh, later in the year. Uh, the family didn't have the means, they said, to take care of the baby. And rather than give the baby to a children's home, they would prefer that it be adopted by us. And we welcomed the idea. That was lovely. It was, um, it was a compliment, really. Anyhow, we spoke to the family throughout and made plans about what would happen and when it would happen. And finally, about six weeks ago, the baby was born, it was a boy. So we initiated what we were supposed to. We moved the crib and looked through romper suits and things like that, and we were due to go over and see the baby and potentially to pick it up. Um, and we had gone through the idea of names. We had settled on a name, which we thought would be lovely. It turned out actually that on the day we were supposed to go over and see the baby for the first time, uh, mum, which is her right, changed her mind and decided that she wanted to keep the baby. Which actually for the baby and for mum, I think that was probably the best result. But for us, it was no less difficult. It was, it was a hard truth. Now, I was, as I say, in this lesson with my 12-year-old student, and we were talking about her plans, we were talking about where she sees herself in five or seven or 10 years time. And it struck me that I couldn't see the horizon. I didn't really know where I would be, where we would be three to five years from now. Um, life had been difficult, not just because of the pandemic, but actually it hasn't made life any easier, it's been very, very hard. So I was thinking, well, what should I do? What, what can I possibly do that's worthwhile, that's worth doing? You know, there are all manner of jobs one can do for money, but you want to be more useful than that. I, I want to be more useful than just working for cash. And it struck me, the internal dialogue, the nagging dialogue, which I have heard on at least three occasions before in my life, once when I first moved to Faversham, and I thought there would be an opportunity um, then. And then again, when I was working in Canterbury. And then again, about 12 years ago, um, I had had a dialogue. And I don't know, I suppose.
suppose it might be easier at this stage for me to think that it was just an internal dialogue. But I suspect it wasn't. I suspect it was a conversation with God. I suspect that actually this is a calling. And I have fought the calling for long enough. Um, and I decided this time I wouldn't fight. I wouldn't struggle. I wouldn't come up with excuses for reasons why this wasn't the right time or I had something far more important to do. I've decided instead to act upon that voice. And I decided to get back in touch with a few people. So I contacted, first of all, uh, an old boss I had, um, a member of the old board of trustees who I used to work for. And I also contacted somebody else I knew in Canterbury uh, who I used to see at least once a year. And I also got back in touch with my local parish vicar, a man called, a man called Reverend Tony Urry of the St Mary of Charity Church in Faversham. And all three of them came back overwhelmingly supportive. Um, saying they would help as much as they possibly could. Now, at this stage, I don't know how they can help because I don't know, really, what I don't know. It's quite difficult um, to get a sense of direction, especially seeing as I have rather peculiar circumstances. I live in Thailand, and my little boy is very little, and I don't particularly want to just up sticks and move to another country in the middle of a pandemic when my wife has no other means of income and uh, study somewhere. It would be negligent. And so I do want to do what I want to do, but I have specific challenges. Now, what I did, which was what I was able to do, was get in touch with a local Anglican church here, a church called St. George's, which is in a town just up the road, and uh, got in touch with their vicar, who's a lovely chap, and he confirmed he was very happy to be a mentor. Now, he also presents with rather peculiar circumstances in that he was ordained, and he was ordained by um, some uh, an Anglican uh, bishop, who's from um, Siberia, so outside of the Church of England. He conducts a very Anglican and, and, and high church standard of service and very committed to the details of conducting that kind of service, um, uncompromisingly which in its own way is beautiful. But nevertheless, that puts me in a strange and peculiar situation. So he's very happy to cooperate with anything anyone else I know wants to recommend. They all want to cooperate and assist where they can. And I, in the meantime, am ricocheting around, trying to be of service, trying to be of use. So my local chap here, and I'll, just, I'll share his name with David, has said that I could help with a website, which I've done, and I could help with a fan page on Facebook, which I've done, and a YouTube channel, again, which I've done. But what's the next step? I'm not sure. Having read on the internet the process as much as I can gather, there is now period of discernment. There is a period whereby I need to, and those observing me I guess, need to determine whether I'm the right person for the job. And I hope they do. I hope I'm able to do the role justice, I guess. I have no doubts in my own mind whether or not it's the right course of action for me, but am I the right person for it? I'm not sure. I hope to be. I'll try to be. 
Now what I'm going to do, what I plan to do, is to come back here uh, from time to time and give you updates. Okay, so um, I think this is this is a, a worthwhile exercise, if only for my own mind, if only to explain myself to others in the absence of anyone else to explain something to. Um, and also I'll tell you if I've had any communication from anyone um, and I'll tell you what their instructions were and how I'm, how I'm doing, uh, yeah, how I'm getting along. So I think this really is the start of a video blog of a journey which is starting. And hopefully, um, if you're interested, then you can join me in that journey. Um, and you're very welcome. So, as I will say, no doubt, from here on in, with prayers and best wishes, I will see you next time.